Yeah, awesome. Hi. Hi. So, as you know, we've been working with this old carbon device. Uh, and I'm going to split a series of videos up into three videos. And one video, which is going to be this one, I'm going to show you the difference in charge voltages. And the other one is going to be really, really interesting. I'm just going to charge it up and discharge it and let you sit and watch it discharge. And on the third one, we'll have a look at what's inside it and have a little bit of a discussion about it. So have a look at the other two videos to get the, the full scope of what I'm trying to say here. And this one is all about the charge voltages. Because above 1.23 volts, water dissociates into hydrogen and oxygen. It's, it's going to happen. That's its dissociation voltage. This occurs in any uh, energy storage device that runs over that voltage. The trick is to either store the gases that are evolved on the surface of your material or recombine them with the catalyst within the material on the electrolyte so that the rate of gas evolution is lower than the rate of storage or the capability of storage and the rate of recombination. This will happen at certain voltages. Now you can raise that voltage depending on the surface modification or the electrolyte modifications that you make. Which is why an awful lot of these aqueous systems are coming out now above 1.5 volts up as far as 2.4 volts. You're getting these high voltage aqueous systems because they're managing that within the system. And of course we're doing exactly the same thing. Now to get an idea of whether this works or not, what we do is we put them into these sealed cells. These are our 2032s and they're sealed cells. And, and we charge and discharge them over quite a few days in order to get an idea of whether that cell is going to explode or not. And we keep pushing up the voltage and doing that until we pop the cell. And that's how we get an idea of whether that is going to survive that charging voltage or not that charging voltage. When we look at the EIS, we can see the... Um, EIS curves moving if we're getting side reactions. If we're not getting side reactions, then the big worry is about gas evolution. So we're looking at gas evolution when we're doing that. Now the old carbon device that we've constructed, it turns out that if we run it at about 2 volts, then the gas evolution is at that equilibrium point that I was talking about. If we run it at 2.4 volts, the generation of gas is slightly above that equilibrium point. So here's one after uh, charging for 72 hours and there's a slight concave to the CR2032 and that is where the gas evolution is too great and it's putting pressure on the can. Now in a sealed system like this where we're using the minimum electrolyte, it's called a starved cell, that's a problem. In an open system like a lead acid battery which is called a flooded cell, it's clearly not such a problem as long as that rate of evolution is still relatively low. It's something that happens in all lead-acid batteries, for example. This is why you have to top lead-acid batteries up. If it's a sealed lead-acid battery, actually in the vent is a recombination catalyst to combine the hydrogen oxygen back into water and drip it back in the cell. But you always have that problem. And with a uh, gold carbon device run at 2.4 volts, that would be a problem too. It would be a flooded cell that would need maintenance and need um, topping up. So what's the benefit of it? Well, the benefit of it is actually the energy stored is, is enormous. It's really quite impressive. And that's what I'm going to do here. What I've got here is an open old carbon battery. Remember, in one of the other videos, we're going to look what's actually in this device so you can have a look at it. Here it's open. It's been charged up to 2 volts. And we're just going to discharge it, time the discharge, and make a note of the milliamp draw. It's very rough and ready. It's just to give us an impression of what actually is the difference. And if I flip that switch, our um, inductive load, our motor here will run and we'll get some readings. So let's do that. And it began at 83 milliamps and about 1.2 volts. And it's busy spinning its way down until it stops. It's all more than a few seconds. We're at half a volt now after 17 seconds, 25 milliamps, 0.3 of a volt, 0.2, and there we go, around about 0.18 of a volt. It um, stopped turning after 27 seconds and the milliamp draw uh, dropped off. Now let's put that on 2.4 volts and give that a charge. So we've just upped our charge voltage to 2.4 volts, flip the switch and then I will recharge that and we'll give that some time to recharge. Now as we do that, then there are a couple of things to note. Um, when you look at this figure here, which is the milliamp draw across this circuit, it's not the milliamp draw that's been fed into the capacitor incidentally, which is this figure here, then we're always reading about 40 microamps or so, somewhere around about there, 20 to 40 microamps, something like that. 
What that does is give us an indication of what the uh, leakage of this circuit actually is. Now, if you look at the Maxwell's application notes, that's actually within the boundaries of what you would expect from a supercapacitor. And to be honest, it's no real surprise. It is just a carbon supercapacitor. We've done stuff to structure the carbon, but it's a carbon supercapacitor. We'd expect it to respond around there. When we have a quick note of the leakage current, we find, oh, hey, it's responding around there. Now, it's clearly not a test of it. It's a ballpark to give us confidence about what's happening. So we still have to do the test on that, very true, but we have a confidence that our leakage current actually is particularly low, so that's kind of cool. The other thing is, when you look at the discharge, this voltage here, it will drop to the voltage at which it can't overcome the resistance of the circuit. So when we drop that right down to 0.18 of a volt, it's giving us another indication that the effective series resistance of this device is actually well within acceptable limits. Again, we haven't tested it, we don't know, but it's giving us the idea that actually those aren't priority figures to look at. What we're really interested in is the actual energy storage and things like ESR and um, self-leakage is actually not going to be an issue in this all-carbon device. We need to firm that up, but we have a confidence that actually it's not going to be the case, just from picking those figures out from this setup. This is still going to take a little bit longer to charge, obviously, and so we're going to give it that little bit longer to charge. In a second or two, when I'm fed up of doing it, I'll flip the switch, whether it's got the 2.4 volts or not. Oh, hey, let's just flip that switch. We can see this time it begins off as 107 and you can really heat that, hear that motor spin and it maintains its voltage much, much higher. So it's at 1.4 now. We've been running 20, uh, 10 seconds. The previous one, uh, remember, ran for only 27 seconds. It was still above a volt and we're at 19 seconds. 66 milliamps. We've just hit a volt after 31 seconds and it's still drawing 55 milliamps. So it's pretty clear that at 2.4 volts in a flooded cell system, we can store a hell of a lot more energy on that device. So we have an option with this device, whether we want it sealed or whether we want it open. Obviously the question is going to be what kind of energy density is in there in the sealed version, what kind of energy density is, in there, uh, is there in the open version. These things take quite a long time to do. So in the, um, there we go, one minute and two seconds. So about twice as long and about twice as high is how, that, how long that ran for, charging at 2.4 volts. We obviously have done this many, many times, actually hundreds of times. And that gives us the idea that this setup that we're talking about, if we put it into a flooded cell, will have quite an impressive energy density. But we'll investigate that later. What we're going to do uh, in the other videos are look at the two volt charging regime and what kind of energy density there is in that regime. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you very much.